does anyone get a little bit of deja vu in the sense that in 2012, the Niners went to the Super Bowl. It was a great year for them. Alex Smith was terrific. He was just great before we got hurt. Then he got hurt in a, on a fluke play and his backup came in and was arguably better or kind of just as good. And Alex Smith never played again for the 49ers. And it was kind of weird and it's still kind of controversial. I think some people feel like he kind of got done dirty in that situation. He lost his job because of an injury and he was playing fantastic and would go on to play great with the Chiefs in the future. So are, is anyone getting 2012 vibes? Leo, you get to go last. Maverick, you're up. <laughs> Um, I would go no, just because I think that with Harbaugh, Kaepernick was his pick. And then Alex Smith, although he, he was on the roster, he obviously wasn't drafted by Harbaugh. And then with Jimmy Garoppolo and Nick Mullins, yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't drafted by Shanahan, but he had the choice to re-sign him and he did. And then Mullins was an undrafted guy. I think there's no controversy. It's always good to have two quarterbacks where if one gets down, you have another one that can step in admirably. But Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy. I'm not really worried that unless Garoppolo's injury gets worse, that Nick Mullins will start more than four games this year. Okay. So I texted Grant with this idea yesterday because as the season progresses, it's just slowly creeping in the back of my mind that I'm starting to get 2012 vibes. Not that anything's set in stone, a set in stone, of course. Kyle Shanahan came out and just completely shut down that no scenario exists where Nick Mullins will take over the starting job. And to play devil's advocate as the head coach, he's obligated to say that. Jimmy Garoppolo is a $27 million quarterback. Nick Mullins is a undrafted. Yeah, what would Jed York agent. say if he was like, "Excuse me, what? Why, why am I paying this guy? What are you telling me?" Yes, exactly. But where I'm going with this is, if you look at Garoppolo and Nick Mullins after 30 career starts, we still don't know what type of quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is. No one can for sure say he's top 10. He fluctuates between the 10, 17 range, maybe to throw out a random number. So how he doesn't play Nick enough. So how, after nine career starts, can you say Nick Mullins is just a very good backup or he's just a stopgap stop quarterback? You can't say that after nine starts. You just can't know. say it. We can't even we – exactly. It's all about opportunity. And yep. the more opportunities <clears throat> that Nick Mullins is going to get, the greater chance that there's fuel this fire. If he goes out and balls out Sunday night, throws for 300 yards against the Eagles on primetime, and Jimmy Garoppolo has another Arizona Cardinals performance – why do you do? We start talking about Nick Mullins? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Why yeah. Yeah. Because it's not like Garoppolo has 80 starts under his belt or a championship under his belt. He's as much of a work in progress, not as much, but he is a work in progress too. Leo, bring some sense to this discussion. I have to, I have to. Um, no, it doesn't because Kaepernick brought a different dynamic than what Alex Smith uh, brought to the team. Um, uh, well, there, there you go. Vish hit, hit the head on the nail. It's Nick Mullins doesn't bring that different dynamic that Jimmy doesn't have, whether it's extra mobility. Um, it may be a little there because now Jimmy Garoppolo is dealing with, uh, say a knee and a high ankle sprain, but it's nothing crazy like Kaepernick did with Alex Smith. Plus Kaepernick was a second round pick by his head coach, uh, where Nick Mullins is a undrafted free agent where even after that 2017 run where he was clearly better than Nick Mullins, Shanahan still, or excuse me, clearly better than C.J. Beathard, Shanahan still made Mullins compete for the second quarterback job and didn't clearly give it to Mullins. So if he made Mullins compete for the QB2, he's not going to give it Mullins QB1 after three starts. Let me put it this way, guys. Um, if Mullins had stunk against the Giants, Theoretically, he got into that game and just was awful. Played like C.J. Beathard and they lost. And they were one and two right now. You think Jimmy be playing this weekend? I do. I do. He finished that first half against the Jets. I know it's a serious injury, but he played on it. And I think he could play on it again if they absolutely needed him to, but they don't. Their guy is fantastic. Nick Mullins right now. And it's like he's a relief pitcher who just went in and had like a a three pitch, three up, three down inning. You're like, okay, well, we don't need to go back. We can just keep him in the game for a little bit longer and see what happens. So it seems to me that um, it does have a, some shades of 2012 because Mullins has the hot hand and everyone knows it. And if he goes out and plays just like he did this week against the Eagles, like he did the week before against the Giants, I think he'll play again. I think he basically, 
you kind of have to keep him on the field as long as he's playing like close to perfect. If he has a bad game, then he's done. But he's on a heater now. He's like at the craps table and he just rolled a seven. So he gets a chance to roll a seven again. And let's see how many sevens <laughs> he rolls in a row. That's just the way it works, in my opinion. I mean, if he goes out there and craps out, then the, the conversation ends, obviously. It's not like he's Colin Kaepernick and he was been, has been groomed for this moment. Uh-huh. Well, I would, what I will say real quick before we move on, Shanahan inherited Jimmy, just like Harbaugh inherited Alex Smith. Didn't develop him. Shanahan did develop Nick, Nick Mullins. And he wasn't the plan. But if Nick Mullins were to take over this job, at some point and win a Super Bowl, do you understand what a legend Kyle Shanahan would be? I mean, right now, the ultimate legend is Bill Belichick having a, a, a an entire dynasty with a six-round pick at, at quarterback, turning Tom Brady into the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, you could one-up that with an undrafted guy. I, I'm just saying that's how these coaches think. It really wouldn't hurt Kyle Shanahan's legacy for him to turn this, this team over to Nick Mullins. So that's why I feel like the future is in that kid's hands. If he continues to ball out, then we'll see what happens. Nick, what are you going to say? I have two things to add. The first one, I don't know if you're following along to the comment section, but <laughs> someone said that Maverick has a little Nick Mullins in him. Thank you. Thank I was you. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like Nick Mullins, um, which is quite thing, a compliment these days. So a second thing that kind of got me thinking, if you look at the 49ers next year and all the free agents that they have pending with Trent Williams, k Williams, Jaquaski Tart, Richard Sherman, Kendrick Bourne, Kyle mm-hmm. Juszczyk. If you move Jimmy Garoppolo, let's say if they mm-hmm. trade him, you're getting first round compensation more than likely. No doubt. In addition to that, you're clearing up $27 million worth of cap space. And with that cap space, think about right. all the things you can do, especially if you release Quan Alexander, right. D Ford, Weston Richburg, who, whose days are looking outnumbered beyond this season. You can go out and make plays for guys like Jalen Ramsey or Vaughn Miller, who has a club option next year, Shaq Barrett. If you were to just have a star-studded defense with Nick Mullins at the helmet quarterback, I still think it's a Super Bowl caliber team, and they can re-sign Trent Williams and just do so much with all of the money they'd save by electing Mullins and then get first-round draft compensation. And that's a great point. The the thing that we got to remember is Mullins doesn't have to be better than Garoppolo. What Mullins has to show is he can be as good as Garoppolo. If he's as good as Garoppolo, well, then he saves the Niners $27 million. So that's what he has to prove. Do the same things Garoppolo does, and through one game, the answer is a tentative yes. That's why this conversation is interesting because one guy makes 750k and the other guy makes 27 big ones. Let's move on. Let's he, stick with Garoppolo, though. Leo, go ahead. Go, yeah. go ahead. He wasn't as good as Garoppolo against the Giants. I will still say, uh, watching the film, there is a lot of throws that Mullins left on the table, especially to Brandon Ayuk in the touchdown or in the end zone twice on two different occasions. Uh, first occasion was when he was running, booting out to the right, and he was super late on Ayuk, and that it was ended up being a pass deflection. Jimmy, We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo make that touchdown pass to George Kittle numerous of times. So if he wants to play at the same level as Jimmy Garoppolo and start some quarterback controversy, then he has to make those throws. If he does not make those throws, then it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo's team, just like Shanahan said. Well, real quick, Jimmy Jimmy misses throws too, and I think the reason Every people are does. right. So I don't think you can hold a couple misses in the red zone against Nick Mullins, considering the entire game that he had, which was just friend, fantastic. I mean, no no turnovers, three hundred and fifty yards. He really did play well. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I was just saying, yeah. I mean, seems like it's a little harsh. What? I, okay, Jimmy Jimmy's missed Jimmy's missed some throws too. Uh, I think the reason people are intrigued with Nick Mullins is, at least recently with Jimmy, he's had stretches in games where, especially the Arizona game, is like he seemed like he lacked confidence in the Arizona game. And then stretches against Minnesota, against the Chiefs, um, early against the Jets, and then he was terrific against the Jets. It's like he has some inner hesitancy, whether it's the knee, whether it's the losing the Super Bowl, who knows what it is. At least with Nick Mullins, he had this irrational confidence, kind of like J.R. Smith. You know what I mean? Those guys off the bench who just bomb threes in the NBA. And it's like, where, why do you think you can do that? And I think that's usually a good thing from a quarterback. And doesn't mean Nick Mullins will always have that. It's tough to maintain your confidence as a quarterback. But right now, that guy thinks he can do no wrong. And that's a pos- That's kind of like what Kaepernick had in 2012. Isn't that the, the knock on Jimmy a lot of times anyways, though, is that he's a gunslinger and has a lot of confidence sometimes. And if Mullins is also the guy that 
it has confidence and will throw it when he does. He has been accurate so far, but back in 2018, when, when he got into trouble, there, there's some ineffective games, not necessarily awful games, but not great games sometimes.